Hi everyone and welcome to the most anticipated shootout on this channel. The Red Cat 51 versus a 300mm f4 prime lens. And why are we doing this? Because the reality is they get really close. This shootout has been asked multiple times from people after I posted that 70 to 200 millimeter zoom lens shootout with the Red Cat. Because at the end of the day, I thought most people when they're looking at getting the Red Cat probably don't actually own a prime lens. They probably own something like a 75 to 300 or a 7300 and 80 to 200 or something along that zoom lens. And they're wondering, was it worthwhile to to get a small telescope rather than use that zoom lens? And the answer was yes, obviously yes. A prime lens is always going to outshoot a sh zoom lens for sharpness. So the question then became was, well, this is billed as the sharpest 250 millimeter telescope that you could ever buy, which isn't a hard claim to make since this is the only 250 millimeter telescope that I know of in existence at this current, current time. And if you had something like a 200 millimeter or a 300 millimeter prime lens, would that work? So obviously I had to go out, get a lens and try it out. So before we get into the actual comparison, I did want to mention this is a really unfair test. The specs of both of these optics are not same. This is a 250 millimeter f4.9 with a front aperture of 51 millimeters. Whereas this is a 300 millimeter f4 with a front aperture of 77 millimeters. And while there are definitely advantages to the Red Cat, which is mainly in the autofocus, I'm expecting the 300 to actually surprise us because while I worry about focus creep over the evening because of a fly-by-wire focus system, reality is if you nail focus with this guy, I'm sure it's going to outperform the smaller telescope. Despite the fact that they do look about the same size on the outside, point them like this. You can definitely see here that the Red Cat is definitely a smaller aperture, smaller area, is just overall smaller optic train. So I have my suspicions that this is going to give the Red Cat a run for its money, but we'll see in the video how close they actually are. I've gone and set up a new test where I'm testing the 300 f4 telephoto lens, which is the closest lens I have to the Red Cat specs and I'm testing the Red Cat, and we're imaging the Pleiades Nebula. Now, you might be noticing that I'm not in my observatory. That's because I only have like about an hour and a half of clear skies, and to change everything up was going to take too long. But also, simply because this is just a comparison test of sharpness of the stars, I can actually shoot at a second per exposure with each of these cameras, and then check the stars um, to see how they look. So this ends up working quite well. Um, however, I will end up with about 70 images from each session and I will stack them and see what I can get and show you here. So here we have the Pleiades cluster. This is a single exposure from the Nikon 300 millimeter lens. As you can see, one second is not a lot of exposure. And in comparison, here is the Red Cat single frame as well that I'm using as my basis for comparison. So the reason I chose the Pleiades is because with one second, it's not a lot of exposure time. So therefore, I wanted something that was bright in the sky, and the Pleiades is basically a seven-star system clustered together with a lot of blue nebulosity around it. Now, I'm not sure if I'll get the blue nebulosity with these short exposures. However, I do know I'll be able to get the stars, and we can look at the roundness of the stars to see how well they perform, as well as sort of how bright the scene is. Now the camera has the same settings for each. So the 300 millimeters is going to be a little bit tighter crop on the Pleiades Nebula than the 250 will be. That's unfortunately the reality of using a 250 millimeter telescope with a 300 millimeter telephoto lens, but that was the closest I could find. So this is just finishing up here. Um, we're going to take it inside and uh, look at it in Pixasight and do some statistical analysis and sort of see how much better is the Red Cat over the 300, or if actually it's the reverse. I highly doubt it, but you never know that could be the case. 
All right, so here we are in Pixel Site, and as you can sort of see, I've done a side by side comparison. So we're just going to jump straight into it and sort of go through what we are trying to show. So the first picture is the abrasion detection. Now I've converted the image to grayscale, and what you're looking at is the center square is the center of the frame, and then you have the four edges and four corners. And this basically shows us how round those stars are. Now I'm going to do a statistical analysis later, but this gives us a pretty good idea of visually, does this look odd? And as I mentioned before, the top right of both images is going to look a little skewed, and I believe that's due to the sensor, not the actual lenses themselves. So right off the bat, you can definitely see here that the Red Cat and the Nikon are really, really close. It was surprisingly close, and I would say that visually it would be hard to tell which one was better from a single image. Of course, there is a lot of noise in this image because it is shot at the higher ISO value in order to get some detail at one second. But you can definitely see here that both images have decent center star roundness, and the edges also maintain a very round star pattern. So we're going to jump into some more analytical exploration. Next up, we have the FWHM, which stands for full width half maximum. And what this is looking at is how big are the pinpoint stars in terms of pixels. So to give you an idea, this essentially tells you that a higher number means that the star is more bloated. Now, since I did these shots back to back out in my backyard, one would assume that sky conditions, etc., are relatively the same for each set of optics. So smaller numbers are better, but what's more important is that the overall field is a minimum from the largest number to the smallest number. And as you can see here, the red cat is about 0.4 and the 300 millimeter is also about 0.4. So overall flatness of the field is even between the two. What is different, however, is that the red cat, that field flatness is very polar centric. It's definitely flat in the center. And as you go out to the sides, it gets a little worse. And again, the worst spot of that is up in the top right corner. And that seems to be a play in all my optics when I'm using the Nikon Z6. So I feel that is a sensor issue. Whereas with the Nikkor 300 millimeter, that focus plane is all over the place. Now, while it is still relatively minor, it does lead to, is there focus shifting in the optics due to the vibration reduction, due to the autofocus system in there? It's not necessarily clear that it's always going to be the same focus points in there because there are elements that do move in the 300 millimeter. However, when it comes to the eccentricity graph, which show how round the stars are by how close a value of one that you reach. The Nikkor 300 millimeter in this test actually got rounder stars than the Red Cat 51, despite the fact that the Red Cat field is more uniform than the Nikkor 300 millimeter. Now, again, this is a situation where it could be the tripod was moving. Maybe I took a step during this particular frame. There's a couple things that really could get into why this sort of happened. But again, we're so close that the Nikkor 300 millimeter is definitely um, showing that it can hold its own against the Red Cat 51. And I'm sure some people are probably sitting here watching this video are probably thinking, you know what, that 300 millimeter lens is looking pretty darn nice. And this is where the rubber meets the road. On the left hand side, you have the Red Cat image. And on the right hand side, you have the 300 millimeter Nikon. Now, Here's the issue with these two pictures. Immediately, somebody's going to go and say the right is a better picture. And doubly so, it should be. It's a $2,000 lens, 77 millimeter front optics, and it's f4, whereas the Red Cat at 51 millimeter front optics is only an f4.9. In addition, the 300 millimeter is a little bit more zoomed in than the 250 millimeter Red Cat. 
spec-wise, the 300 beats the Red Cat in almost every single category except absolute sharpness, which if you can nail your focus, you're doing really, really well. And you can see that here with this photo. Now, I took this back in 2019 when I first got the Red Cat, sort of back when I was still playing around with some of the equipment I had to get it perfectly working in the observatory dome. And you can see here the results are very good. Now, obviously, if I wanted to get even better results, more exposure time would be required. But overall, if I showed you this photo at the very start and said which telescope took it, I don't think people would be able to tell the difference. Um, from a visual standpoint. Again, we are really pixel peeping in this video to sort of say which one is quote unquote better. All right, so I'll admit I was a little shocked by those results. While I knew this guy was good, I still thought that the Red Cat was going to outperform it by a smidge, but I really thought it was. And I guess I was wrong. The improved 77 millimeter front aperture and F4 definitely provides some value to this. So if you do have a professional prime lens, doing astrophotography with it is definitely a good idea. Now, I still worry about overnight about the focus creeping, and I do want to do a longer test later in the spring when we don't have as many clouds in the sky as we do this time of year. So I do want to talk about the red cap for a second, which is it still has advantages over the 300 that I do want to just point out, not because I'm trying to sell these guys, I'm not, but I think some people will overlook a few things sometimes when they look at the imagery, which is one, you can actually put a two inch filter in the back. It's literally designed for that. And you can definitely set it up on an astro camera set with a filter wheel and a whole bunch of other functions. You do have an autofocus device that actually is manual. So you can actually focus it and you know that your focus is going to be held in position overnight. And overall, the footing and everything else makes it really easy to do some astrophotography with this. And that, again, is singularly what it's designed to do. And it's a $700 tiny telescope. Whereas the 300 millimeter telephoto lens is actually more akin to like an 80 millimeter telescope with a field reducer to get it down to that F4 range. Um, while most 80 millimeter scopes are definitely categorized to have more throw, than the 300 millimeter does, the reality is that that front optics is what you're generally paying for. And price-wise, this is more akin to the trip, a price of a triple telescope as well. And if I actually had a solid, good triplet telescope, I could probably do a shootout between the two and find out that that actually beats out the 300. That would be my initial guess based on my experience doing astrophotography. Telescopes are designed to do one thing really, really well. Whereas this guy here has autofocus, which we saw does affect the field flatness. While it was very flat, it definitely wasn't um, contoured in a way that we would normally expect. So depending on what you're imaging, you may actually have star defects in your target versus off to the side. So that's something to consider um, if you're looking at purchasing a telescope. If you do own a professional prime telephoto lens, you can definitely use it for astrophotography with some reasonable confidence that it's gonna give you a really good image. However, if you haven't purchased one yet, I still recommend going with the Red Cat. And there's one major reason for that, and it's because you can add filters in the back. 80% of the population live in light polluted skies. And while it is possible to get LP filters for the front of lenses, the selection is very limited and it is extremely pricey. Whereas with the Red Cat, you can get a two inch filter on the back. And while yes, some two inch filters are expensive, they are definitely a far less than their 77 millimeter equivalent. So something to think about, especially from a budgetary standpoint. So I guess the message of this video is if you already own a professional prime telephoto lens, you're probably good to go to do some really amazing astrophotography. When, meanwhile, if you're looking at buying something new, while I wouldn't necessarily call the Red Cat a budget option, in this shootout, this is definitely the budget option, and it allows you to put two inch filters in the back, and it's designed again specifically for astrophotography. But ultimately, the choice of which way you want to go is up to you. I am going to look at doing a part two of this video. If you want me to do that, give the video a like and maybe comment below and say, Yes, I want to see that. 
If you feel like this is probably enough of a shootout for you, let me know in the comments. And if you feel like, yeah, you're not happy about that, you're really thinking that I did something wrong, other than obviously put it on a tripod, which yes, isn't the best solution in the world, but when you're dealing with almost now five weeks of full clouds, you go with what you can do. So I hope you enjoyed this shootout with the Red Cat and the 300 millimeter lens. Be sure to check out some of my other Red Cat videos. And again, if you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. I respond to every single one of them and they definitely help guide my content going forward. So thank you for watching and clear skies. Please, 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 please bring me some clear skies. <laughs>